now ready to move on to the bag. So we're going to measure out 10 centimetres of the ribbon and cut a 10 centimetre length. There we go. And then I'm going to post my 10 centimetre length of ribbon through my D-ring like that. And this is what your strap is going to attach to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure up 13 centimetres from the bottom of our bag panel. And make sure that you're looking at your fabric like this so that you've got the deco fans facing the right way. You want them sort of this way. And then you're going to measure up 13 centimetres from that bottom edge. Fold your ribbon in half with the D-ring sandwiched into the ribbon. And then just pop a wonder clip there to secure it. So we're just going to do a few stitches here just to um, attach that bit of ribbon with the D-ring. So eventually when your bag's finished, I've got both pieces of fabric here just to show you. Eventually when your bag's finished, that will fold over and that will be your sort of finished look there. So the, um, I'm designing this, I'm making this with the wrist strap on this side so it will go on my right hand um, if you wanted to you could do it the other side although to be honest with you it doesn't really matter because you could fold it around that way but then I suppose those fans will be facing there so yeah so the way that I'm just designing this just thinking out loud is so that that wrist strap goes on that arm but if you wanted to change it if you're left-handed you could put it on this side if you want it's up to you it's your design I'm going to put mine on this side. So I've measured up 13 centimetres. I'll get rid of that other panel now. I just need one panel placed in front of me, right sides up and looking, uh, facing the right way. 13 centimetres up from the bottom marks the point at the bottom of your ribbon. The D-ring is sandwiched there. And I'll just put a clip on it to uh, hold it in place. And I'm just going to do a couple of stitches just to hold that together. So I'm going all the raw edges, the raw, two raw edges of the folded ribbon and the raw edge of the bag are all matched up together and everything's lined up. And I've got the edge of my presser foot matching the edge of my fabric. And I'm just going to stitch back and forth. To hold that in place, so that's now locked in, ready for later, and that's going to sit that side, and it's um, going to attach to our wrist strap that we made. We're now going to move on to the lining, and the first thing that we need to do is to prepare the internal pocket, and just to add that little bit of extra internal detail, I've included a piece of gold metallic binding, which looks really special with this fabric. So we're going to start by binding the top edge of our pocket with the gold binding. And then once we've done that, we're going to fold the pocket up and attach it to the lining. So you're gonna to need to re-thread your machine in white. And at this point, if you're using a 90 needle, you might want to switch back down to a lighter weight needle for sewing through this Lurex binding. So you might want to switch back down to a size 70 needle. Um, now what we're going to do is if you turn your fabric so that you're looking at the wrong side and you take your binding and you open up one of the folds and you are just going to go along here matching those raw edges. So don't worry if I actually gave you a binding that's a little bit longer than the width of the fabric that I gave you. So don't worry if it overhangs at the end there, that's okay, we can trim it down in a minute. So just put a couple of wonder clips to hold that in place. Like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew along that crease. And then once you've done that, we'll fold the binding back through to the front side. If you're watching this and you're slightly more experienced with sewing and you've done lots of bindings before, you may want to start by attaching it onto the right side, flipping over and then stitching in the ditch to attach the binding. And if you want to do that method and you know um, how to do that, then, then you can choose to do it that way around. I'm going to do the simpler method 
and I'm going to talk you through that now. So we're just going to move that first one to clip out the way and I just want to um, hand wind my needle down because I can do that really slowly and I can just see that the needle has gone in exactly on the crease of that binding which is what I want. So I'm using a straight stitch, white thread and a slightly lighter weight needle. I think this is 70, this needle. The heavy needle may have um, laddered the Lurex fabric, so that's why I wanted to change it. Something's got caught up under there. It's just the thread tails, I think. There we go. So if ever I find that happening, make sure that your needle's down in the fabric before you stop and lift the foot to release any threads that have gotten them caught up. now threaded all uh, sewn away along that crease. What we're going to do now is press this through to the front to create our bound top edge. Okay, so I'm just going to start by pressing up a little bit there where I've just sewn. And again, I want to keep the iron fairly cool. Anytime that you see a metallic finish, try to keep your iron nice and cool as you can. Turn it over to the front side and give it another little press there. And then we're gonna just fold over. So if you find that when you're pressing this over to the front, you're not happy that the binding comes to the front enough um, then you can just trim off and I've got my big scissors for this so a nice straight line let's turn it over this side actually making sure that you're only trimming through one layer of the binding and you can just keeping it as straight as you can just trim down your seam allowances there a little bit just by a couple of millimeters you see I've just cut off a little strip there. Try and keep it nice and straight. There we go. I'm just going to discard that bit. And that's going to help me then bring the bind into the front and um, just look a bit better. There we go, and that looks really nice and pretty now. So where's my wonder clips? So I've just literally finger pressed that using the warmth for my ironing mat. I just folded that to the front and finger pressed it there. And then I'm just gonna sew right on the edge there to create that bound top edge of my pocket. Did you see my little snips, by the way? How sweet. These are from a company called Beyond Measure and they've got a spring. They're just the sweetest little thing. They look like they're made for dollies. Um, they're very useful, actually. Right. Put that under there. I'm gonna go right on the edge. And there we are. And I'm just going to sew that binding in place. I might just whoops, increase my stitch length slightly. It's on two and a half now, my stitch length. The default stitch length on my sewing machine is 2.2, which is quite small, I think. Um, And I'm just doing it by eye, looking here to check that I'm right on the edge of that binding there. 
And there you go. And that's a beautiful round top edge for my pocket. That's the back and that's the front. Right, so I'm just going to trim off where that um, rounding extends beyond the pocket. I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. And then I want to fold my pocket up. So we're going to take this long piece of fabric here and we're just going to kind of concertina it into a few compartments like this before sewing it into the lining. I've got my bank card here, <laughs> which is a good guide. So I want that to be showing. This is a good bank card because the um, numbers are all on the back, so it doesn't matter filming it. And you don't want to actually melt your card when you're ironing, so do be careful. I know that cards are hot at this time of the year, <laughs> but you don't literally want to melt your credit card and the week before Christmas is not good. <laughs> right. You could do, you could use, um, you know, you could think, well, actually, I want this to be for keys or makeup compact, mirror, and then that can be just showing like that there. Okay, room for your, your card and your, I don't know, coffee club points or <laughs> whatever else. So I've now, I have three pockets, I'll have one, two, and then three. So once I've kind of used my card as a guide and I've just concertina it there, um, in fact, would it be helpful so that you don't have to risk melting your credit card if I just flattened it out and popped a tape measure on it and then you can see what my measurements are. There we go. So from the top edge, the first press was six and a half down and then 11 and a half, 17 and a half, and then the final one was at 22, if that helps. Right, so now we've um, pressed those kind of concertina folds. You can turn your panel of fabric round to the back and we're just going to come round and um, I'm just going to take all of that and fold it in. by a centimetre. I'm probably going to have to put a little clip there to hold it because it's quite a lot of bulk to, um, to press through where all those folds are. Put a couple of wonder clips. Wonder by name and wonder by nature. These lovely clips. So I'm just folding in by a centimetre either side. And then the same at the bottom. So your top pocket will be slightly longer. Because your first pocket there will go all the way down. can be for your lipstick. <laughs> okay, so I folded it in all the way around and now I just need to place that onto my um, my lining piece ready to sew it on. Take one of your pieces of lining that's just got a crease in there from being in the box, ignore that crease. And then we want to place our pocket somewhere around about there. 
Now what you've got to think is that when this clutch bag is um, closed, it's going to fold over. And we put our ribbon at 13 centimetres up from the bottom. So to get our positioning, just put a little clip there at 13 up from the bottom. And kind of think to yourself, that's where my, my little D-ring is. So it's going to fold over there. So that's where it's going to fold over. So I kind of want my pocket to have a bit of room before that folds. So I think that's a good position for it. You also want it to be in the middle. So one way that you can do that, and it's an easy, cheaty way, is I just sort of press that in half and finger press that to create a bit of a crease line. And then I do the same on my lining there. And then I can just about still see that crease and I just line up those creases. So to give you an idea of the positioning there, I've got mine four centimetres up from the bottom edge. Your pocket, depending on how you folded it, might be slightly different. Just make sure that it's not kind of too near the top because otherwise obviously it's going to stop your clutch from folding over. So it needs to be in the bottom two thirds. So I'd say four centimetres up from the bottom and at the halfway point is a good position for your pocket. Let's measure that again because I moved it. Four cm's up. There we go, and I'm measuring up those crease lines that I made. So that's, I'm happy with that position now. Now what I need to do is just replace those wonder clips with some pins because um, you're going to need pins here for this pocket which is floating in the middle of that piece of lining um, rather than wonder clips. So I'll put pins in and then I'll take the wonder clips out. And then we'll sew the pocket to our lining fabric. It's beginning to get dark outside now. The evenings are really drawing in. It won't be long before it's the shortest day and we're then getting longer days again. <laughs> Bring on the spring. Bring on 2021. Can't come quick enough, can it? <laughs> there we go, put one more there. So I've put in a few pins all the way around the edge there. Three that side, three that side and then a couple at the bottom. And now I'm going to take that over to my machine and I'm just going to say down, along and back up to secure that pocket in place. I'm just going to sew right around the edge there. Take the pins out as I go and I'm simultaneously back stitch to begin with and I'm simultaneously fixing those pleats and attaching my pocket to my lining. Slow down as I get to the corner, make sure my needle is in, lift my foot, swivel around, and off I go again. And you can do this by eye, or you can try to find a reference point to keep you nice and straight. There are these funny little grooves on my foot, and sometimes I just look at this line and check that it's lining up with one of those grooves, um, and that's how it stays straight. Because even though this is the inside of the bag, it's still nice to practice some straight sewing. Let's do one more. One, there'll be two more stitches will get me into the corner. Yes, lovely. Just hand round those final two. Uh, foot back down. Pins out as I go. I love how this looks with the gold binding at the top. Uh, 
and then a couple of back stitches in. Easy on the throttle. Let's trim off. Uh, there we go. And my pocket, I've got one, two, three compartments, and my pocket's all sewn on.